Okay, open source systems for operating your model train set. When I started looking at, around the internet, and particularly with my interest in the Macklin system, I f eventually came across a gentleman by the name of George Flumen in Germany. And what George was able to do was reverse engineer the Macklin system, as I showed you a little earlier. He realised that the, what was going on in this cable was basically a very old networking system used in production machinery and computer control back in the 1960s and 70s called CAN bus. And basically you could send a digital signal down the cable to some sort of a controller and that controller would then supply information out to um, other machinery on a very simple network with each individual machine having its own address to send to. What the guys at, at of course, at, um, at, uh, at Lens Electric had come up with was the idea of laying that sort of CAN bus networking system onto a railway, model railway system. So in, in George's case, he reverse engineered it and he came up with a control system that was he gave a name to as Rail Uno. And the reason why he called it Rail Uno is the fundamental building block is this small card, which is a Arduino Uno, and this is version three, microcontroller. The idea being that there was a, a software program loaded into this, burnt into this chip, which was the thing that generated the signals out to the, the track. But to get them out to the track, you needed to have a CAM bus capability. So that plugged into the top. So once again, Arduino, CAM bus shield goes over the top. That's what they call it in the Arduino fraternity, a shield. That plugs into those, that gives you a little module. And then you had a cable going out to the Macklin track box or the control box that supplies the digital signals. And once again, 16 to 19 volts going into some sort of track box and this is generating 5 volt signals from the computer up to. So George developed, developed software for here, the instruction um, details to burn into here um, and basically that was his system and he promoted that. At the time when I was looking at his system I could not quite understand it. It seemed very very complicated. But one of the things I did notice on his website, he made reference to the fact that if you wanted to run a graphical user interface on your computer, he suggested you look at a particular program made by Desktop Station. And that's how I came to find Desktop Station in Japan. Now initially when I went onto Desktop Station, they came up with a very, very similar concept. The gentleman running the show is uh, known by his internet proxy handle as Yasan, and Yasan actually wrote a set of instructions to actually show you how to put all this together and what programming was required to, to get it set up and running on the system. There was no problem because basically you have the USB printer cable makes the connection, as you can see here. USB printer cable is what's used to take the information on the controlling program on your computer out to the Arduino. And then you had to make up a cable to go from the CAN bus card. So this particular cable on top here with the plug out to the Macklin track box. Now you need to have one of these 10 pin mini DID connectors. These, these are not easily procurable in Australia, but the rest of the bits and pieces I could source from my local electronic shop here in Sydney. One of the things I did have to get all is one of these digital 10 pin plugs and I actually sourced mine from cables and connectors in the northeastern part of the United States. And as you can see on the front of the page, they sell for $5.59 US. And you can see the part number there. 
At the time when I bought mine in, towards the end of 2014, they had them on special five. If you bought a total of five, you could get them for $5 each. So I bought five knowing I'm in Australia and a long way from the source of supply. So I ordered them in and I've got some spares and I built up my cable. I was rolling over then into 2015 and starting to put everything together. At the end of February 2015, Raspberry Pi organization released Raspberry Pi Model 2B, which was a big step up in performance. And during that period of time, I believe Yassan was also looking at how complicated all this was in the way of trying to use three bits of equipment. Is there some way that we could actually make it a simpler system? So he started working on, on that in late 2014, rolling over into 2015. And then the Raspberry Pi came along, Raspberry Pi 2. And that significantly changed things. However, he still went ahead and he developed a single board that plugs in very much like this shield. Um, but what it's done is it's taken some of the components off the Raspberry, off the Arduino and laid them onto the board on top here. And he found a particular um, Toshiba chip that's very, very good at driving electric motors at, at 15, up to 50 volts. He found one of those that would be ideally suited to uh, fit onto a, onto a card as a shield. And he still has that available today. He calls it a, a DCC forward slash MM2 shield card on his desktop station system.